Welcome back to Just Off the Play. We continue on with season four. It is episode 51. We got Armando. My name is Cody. There is no lockout here, just bad weather. Just terrible weather, man. Uh, and no game, hardly any games because of it. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, and it ruined everybody's fun. I mean, there were so many people amped up. I mean, our game, we got, we got canceled what, in the second inning? Yeah, we played inning and a half. Inning and a half, Yeah, man. and, you know, that that's the issue with starting in February. You know, you try to get these games in, but uh, we're still playing winter ball, nevertheless. It certainly does feel like it. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I know February's still winter, right? Yeah. When, well, it, it, it's March 1st. Today's March 1st. That's right. It's and true. it's not spring. If we're still in winter. <laughs> when, 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 when does that season kick over? Uh, it's mid-March, mid? yeah. Oh, it, it, man. Theoretically, yeah. Uh, well, on paper, I think it's mid-March. What's up, Bo? Even though it may not feel like it. But, uh, uh, you know, it still feels like winter. Who, who knows? I think we'll still get winter in March, in April, in May, yeah. <laughs> on Texas, right? Yeah. Texas weather. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So we got Pedro, we got Petr Mr. Mr. Gambler in the house. Uh oh, getting ready for Vegas. That's right. We're gonna we're gonna. Should you be packing? <sighs> you know, I'm I'm a last minute packer, but yes, mentally I'm there. Uh, I got notification that my stinger bat is on its way, so I hope that. Um, you ordered a new stinger bat. I did. I did. So. They're getting my money. They're getting my money. Okay. All They're right. They're getting my money. <laughs> so you break it and you continue to try another one. I feel that uh, because I think because of that day, because three, four bats broke. Mm -hmm. And uh, although they were the same brand that same day, um, I felt like uh, I got to give I got to give them a shot. So, OK, I, I really I really don't. Honestly, the, the pitches that I swung at um, shouldn't have been. I shouldn't have swung at them. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I admire you for admitting that that <laughs> it, it, it is a user error and not the the material itself, right? right? And that's what a lot of players do, right? They, hey, not me. It's the bat. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's not. It's it's you swing at a bad pitch, whether you you swing on the inside pitch or you swing at a one that was too out, and or, or you hit the end of the bat. You know, yeah. in my case, I was too in front of it, and yeah. you know. Well, well yeah, we we saw the mark. You know, it's <laughs> up on the handle. And, yeah. Not a whole lot of bats are going to survive when you when you hit it right now, there. Only only the bomb bat, which is very popular right now. Yeah. yeah. Kyle, what's up, Kyle? What's up? Look at Joe's in the house. Uh oh. Um, I wonder if Joe got the pitch. He was supposed to pitch this weekend, so I'm not. Uh, I don't know if the Mexican League pitched, uh, played the game or not. I think. Um, and I even saw him. I don't know if you saw it. He was actually supposed to pitch for HBA this weekend. No kidding. Yes, he was. Is that right? Marlins. Hmm. Not some no surprise there, right? No, High shots? I, I guess not. No. Uh. Uh. Um, yeah. Well, you know that's a shame. You, you you get in a rotation and boom, bad weather. Bad weather yeah. sucks. Maybe good for whoever he was, whoever he's gonna play. Face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know we could say the same about our game, right? Yeah. Um, yes. Because it looked like a nice little ringer came in for us. Yes. Uh, nice little lefty, throwing really good stuff. Really good stuff. Man. Yeah, and it's great that you know none of the stats up to that point counted, right? Very happy. <laughs> I'm very happy. I I I, uh, I had to call. I had to call Adam. Hey, man delete that tape delete it throw it away <laughs> it never happened that game never existed anybody comes looking for it 10 years later it never happened it's gone it's gone man not, not in the record books at all yeah kyle says kyle's uh kyle says it was cold as balls man which it really was man it really was so and that worked out to our our advantage so we have a nice little preview of next time yeah we do yeah. we do i mean if the if the rotation lines up Right, yeah. If the rotation lines up. Well, I, I gotta think they're gonna line it up. Yeah, because it's true. Yeah, I mean, a almost any team would. I mean, it's it's the same thing with uh, any other team, right? You kind of figure out who you're gonna pitch, and yeah. you know, it's like uh, uh, what, what I used to say. I used to kind of, I, I, I uh, I used to tell Stuart, I was like, man, I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little mildly offended that I, you know, we didn't get to see Tim Jones quite as much as everybody else did. <laughs> 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 now he says it was a schedule. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. You know, but uh, well, you kind of want to work the schedule with the rotation, right? They got to coincide. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's it's a uh, definitely um, uh, as as you you know um, you got your ace pitcher, you kind of tell him, hey man, look at the schedule. That's one thing beautiful, right? About HBA, you got already the season lined up. You know who you're going to play. So you can say, hey, man, I need you for this, this, and this, and this. Can you make it? If you can't, okay, here's my next yeah. one. It's just too bad we get it two days before the opening weekend. Which is a little unusual. 
It was a little unusual, I agree. Yeah. Yes, it, we usually get, we get, well, what do we got unusual, right? We got started early. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then we only got a small period of time to, to get the schedule, yeah. right? Because there was a lot of people kind of going, hey, I can't know if I can commit to full season because this, that, the other. So, uh, Kyle says we're going to see him again, which I, I, I don't doubt that we're going to see him. Uh, I, I expect to see him again. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we hope to see him again because you want to be competitive, right? You, you mm -hmm. want to face the best. Yeah, yeah. And, See about you know what you're made out of what you sure. yeah what you can do with that you know yeah like yeah. Uh, hopefully he doesn't hopefully that uh, I don't remember hey, Kyle if you could throw out the pitcher's name hopefully he doesn't uh, make me regret my life choice and be like why am I even playing baseball man yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it was cold so yeah it was definitely cold uh, yeah. Joe said he pitched for the Gulf Coast Indians last two games but he didn't he didn't pitch this weekend which he was supposed to, again I was also supposed to pitch with the um, Marlins but just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. So whoever the Marlins, you know, we're going to play, man, yeah, they saved a few strikeouts. <laughs> <laughs> but at some point, you you, you kind of want to see that, you know. You do. I mean, I, you don't want to take a loss while doing it, though. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. I mean, I, I'm I'm probably going to eat these words here, but I, I, I definitely like to face Joe Lau, yeah. you know. I mean, it's, it's um you know, he, he's obviously a professional pitcher in, in Mexico, so it, he's a... Uh, you know, um, he's a, he's a good pitcher, so I definitely would love to, to to see what I can do against him. You know, and uh, I kind of want to see him, but then you know, you kind of like I really don't. Yeah, <laughs> it just depends what kind of season you're having. You know, if you're having a great season, yeah, come on, bring it on. Yeah. If you're having a terrible season, like come on, man, I I gotta face Joe next weekend. Like come on, man. <laughs> well, that's something you want to put on your resume, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I you know I would too. Um, I guess you can be optimistic to a certain degree. <laughs> you could be fooling yourself, right? But if you lose, how, how can you be mad at that? <laughs> right? I mean, you can't be like, hey, man, I faced, I faced a great pitcher. Yeah. Right? I faced yeah. a great pitcher. I mean, and what do you think happened? Well, I struck out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, you could you could have took those odds to, to, to Vegas and you would have won, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a great pitcher, so... Um, and Joe says, yeah, let's set it up. <laughs> I need to work. <laughs> he needs, he, well, what he means is I need the confidence booster. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Uh, get some know. K's to carry him into the next game. Right, get him this confidence. Like, man, I just struck these fools out, man. They yeah. didn't know what's going on. So, what's up, David? Um, yeah, man, but I mean, there was only, so it was only a few games. Um, and uh, we, all, we got um, a special guest coming on. We're going to get... Uh, Matthew Replinger, he's a he's a he manages or he's the GM, GM. for for the Denver Browns. Denver Browns, which is an independent uh, semi pro league, a team that plays in a league there in uh, Colorado. And and we met him in uh, the Coastal Classic, mm -hmm. right? Coastal Classic, really cool guy. Some of you guys know him. If you guys were in the Classic, you guys seen him. He has a very big beard. I majestic, mean, my, majestic I beard. Say, I would yes. say. I mean, mine's is a little ponytail compared to his man beard. Yeah, that, you know? that's little league. Just little he's league. in the bigs. <laughs> he's definitely in the bigs. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he's also the founder of Pro Positive Yoga. Correct. Pro so Positive. He's big in, into to yoga. Uh, healthy mind, healthy body. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, I, I definitely interested in in in, in um, interviewing him. So we're going to be interviewing him here in a little bit first kind of live interview if you guys have followed us to the seasons we usually used to pre-record those um and then release them on youtube i'm way behind on youtube releases so please don't get on me on that but um but we come I'm, to expect it. yeah i know man each time i go I'm, I'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it <laughs> look at look at bo all of a sudden bo don't worry about it i feel your pictures too bo don't worry about it man Shut down well i'm trying to look at them but i <laughs> <laughs> God. Okay, man. GD is right. You know, when it comes to uh, social media, uh, you know. See, you you stop there, right? Because that's pinned. You okay. just gotta go one more down. Okay. All the right. first one, I always try to pin with live. So. Well, you didn't have to go and say all that. We are live, <laughs> in case you forgot. I did. I actually did. <laughs> I actually did. Oh shit. So um. Let's let's go over the scores and and while you're giving out the scores, I'm gonna try to get Matt to join us um, live. So we'll see how that kind of works out for me. Well, you better hurry up because we we only have two games. Uh, there was absolutely no games in the Saturday league except for our inning and a half, uh, which ended in mud and rain. Wow. Um, 
Hope we, and we talked about it as a good pitcher, and there was no score. Cold 45s, so, right? Yes, the 45s. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, what sucks is it was a 1 o'clock game, but usually you can, rel- you can rely on that first game, like that 10, 11 a.m. game, to determine if the field is playable and if you can keep going. Because odds are if that game gets canceled, you're not playing. Right, right, right. right. But we didn't have that. For some reason, we were the first game at 1 o'clock. So, you know, we had to deal with it. We got there. We dressed out. We got rained on. And we went home. And and it was cold. And I mean, it was cold. And it was cold, man. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was uh, you know, um, uh, I didn't like it because it was cold. Um, you know, it, 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 you know, it's two competitive teams, Colt 45s and Pirates. And uh, we were looking forward to a good game. And what I hate about being the first game, as you said, is that everybody's watching you to see if you get to play your game. And I usually like to be the one watching somebody else going, okay, if you get to play, if you don't get to play, cool. I got the rest of the day to do whatever I want. When you're kind of in limbo and you're the one that has to go do it and, and test and the field, test the yeah. field. I hate that, man. Well, like I said, normally when you play at one o'clock, you don't have to do that. But there was just no early game for some reason. Yeah. But yeah. The, the mound turned into a mud hole. I mean, that's really what did it. And it yeah. just started raining. I mean, we, we played in the rain. It was kind of miserable. Uh, yeah. It was misting. And it wasn't heavy rain. But, you know, when the pitcher can't land, when he can't land and he's slipping all over the place, that's just dangerous. Oh, it is. Yeah. It Especially is. when you got two good pitchers that rely on pushing off and, and landing well. So. Yeah, I mean that's it's it's and then you and then you're ruining the mound, right? I mean the mound gets ruined, yeah. and we know the mound is important. Yeah, so. I mean you or I we wouldn't know, but uh, we, <laughs> yeah, I understand it to be a, a big deal, <laughs> very big deal, a very big deal. But, but you know someone's probably cursing our name because we messed it up, and then we just covered it with the tarp. It's all we could do at this moment, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean. That's all we could do. We we definitely did not do it on purpose, you know. It's all it's all we could do on that at that point, you know. But um, you know, if um, yeah, guinea pigs is right. Yeah, and that's that's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to. So um, I can't talk about the two games that were played, and it happened to be two hardball three sixty five games, which was at Anderson. So evidently, Anderson was fine to play. Anderson was yeah. You know what? I saw that. I did yeah, see that. Both games were at Anderson. So there was no sun to dry it up. So who knows? Maybe it just didn't get a lot of rain. And, you know, we thought the rain was going to miss Maul, but inning and a half into it, it just... Yeah, because I think I because it. it was enough, and then with that misting, it just... Yeah. It just, it's really, you know, it just it was enough to, to just ruin it, you know? Especially on the mound, because, I mean, I think the field wasn't even that wet. No, but, it, it wasn't, because I went there early, and I looked at it, and it was fine. Uh but, you know, I was out and about that morning, and it seemed like everywhere I was, it was raining. And I'm thinking, there's no way. There's right, no, no way. way. There's no, no way. way. But you get there, it's like, okay, it's kind of playable. Yeah. It's wet. It's easy to dive and slide and not get hurt. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, no game. So our strikeouts don't count. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they never existed. <laughs> I don't have done any dimension. And uh, Ballard broke a bat for nothing. He did. He did. He yeah. did. <laughs> I mean, it, it was for a hit. Yeah, nice. That hit. did not happen. That did not happen. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, we're gonna say we're gonna tell him, hey man, you can't you can't claim that as a hit. You know, so it's a it's a mental hit. It's a mental hit. That's right. Uh, so two games at Anderson, Gladiators and the Gamblers. I think the Gamblers are just a winning team. You hear the the team name Gamblers, and they're just always winning. Seems like it, man. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, you can't go wrong with that name. No. So it, it, it's very ironic that, uh, by the way, we're going to, uh, gamblers are going to Vegas next weekend. Uh, this weekend, I'm sorry, this weekend. So, you know, shout out to them and shout out to, you know, we're representing Houston. So, uh, but it's funny to be the gamblers in Vegas. Very appropriate. So the gamblers beat the gladiators 15 to 5. This was Anderson, right? This is at Anderson. Yes. Which I haven't played there in a while. Have you? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. I mean, last time, last time we were there, physically there, we were watching a championship game. But yeah. yeah, I mean, but I remember the days playing two, three times a week there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was the go-to field. Well, it, we're, it's gonna be maybe this season, right? We're with yeah. our new team, the Goodfellas. So yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. 
Um, the Hitmen also played the Derricks, and they won 14-9. to nine. So a little closer game. Okay. Yeah. And no home runs. No home runs. No, man. Only two games to get a home run and couldn't do it. Coastal got to play this weekend. Um, the Apollos, the Stealth and the Apollos played, you know, played out. And uh, the, if I remember right, the Stealth shut them out. So okay. Stealth shut them out, shut out the Apollos at Coastal. So they got to play there. So apparently there's, you know, good wet or Turf, not rain. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, the, the outfields, you know, grass. But so they got to play. And then... um. The uh, International League, I believe, they were playing their championship game, and it was the Red Sox and uh, Valenzuela. I'm probably saying that wrong, right? Say it again. No, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> the Red Sox and... No, 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 no I'm sorry. Nicaragua. I apologize. I apologize. Okay. See, Nicar- you, didn't, you didn't have to go there, <laughs> I know. but you did. I, I exposed myself <laughs> again. But it was, it was, it was Nicaragua, and, and the reason I said Nicaragua... Uh, because um, they have a channel and they were doing it live, and so I, I shared it on our Facebook, and uh, it was actually cool. I was kind of watching it, and uh, you know Pedro was on that team, yeah. Papa Chicken, and so uh, I think they lost four to three. So usually good champion, good if you look at good championship games, four to three is, is the number. Yeah, one run yeah. games. Yeah. Oh, we got Sergio in the house. Little Serge. Okay. Uh, Pedro plays for. Nicaragua. The Red Sox, Red Sox, Red, Red Sox, Sox. Red okay. Sox yeah. and they lost to the Peloteros. Okay, which I three. assume, which I assume, like I said, there's enough enough Nicaraguans in on that team to, to, to call it that. To call it that, and and also what was kind of nice is the um, they had a commentator in Spanish. Oh, <laughs> Spanish. To, and uh, I, I was really interested. I was gonna get. I was trying to get uh, Pedro to go. I was. I meant to send him a text like, "Hey man, can you go take a picture of the guy's setup? I want to see what the setup is." You know, because he looked like he was like he was even panning. So I, I gotta believe he's on a tripod. But I like to see his camera. Uh, but he was calling a good game. You know, in Spanish. But yeah, calling a good game. You might be better at it in Spanish. Uh, can't be any worse <laughs> than English, right? <laughs> um, let me. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna FaceTime Matt and we'll get him on the line. Are we good? To get him on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two games and that was it. Okay, I'm gonna FaceTime Matt and let's uh let's see how it goes. Oh man, let's see. Yo, yo, Matt. What's up, man? Hey, Armando. How you, are you? Good, good. You go by uh, Matthew or Matt? I go by Rep. My last name's Replinger. Okay. So. Yeah, you know, we may have mispronounced it. Replinger. Oh, yeah. Replinger. We definitely, usually, yeah. usually we'll have a guest on and we'll ask them, hey, how do you, how do you, how do you pronounce your name? So, um, but uh, you're on live now and uh, right only, on. On, only you guys, only you can see us, but... Um, Everybody else can hear you, so everybody should be cool. able to hear you loud and clear. Hey, give me a thumbs up, everybody, if you guys can hear uh, Rep. Um, and hopefully then, they can. Yeah, hopefully they can. I mean, I could hear, we could hear you, but I'm hoping. <laughs> Got you loud and clear in my headphones. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. Yeah, cool. man. So, uh, thanks. hey, thanks for doing this interview, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate my the pleasure. patience. Uh, funny, funny back story. Uh, when we were trying to connect uh, to do this interview... I was worried about because he's in Denver right now, right? So I was worried about the whole Central and Mountain, I guess. Uh huh. I think Central Mountain is yeah. it Mountain? It's time zone. Yeah. Yeah. Mountain time. Yeah, Mountain time, right? So I'm thinking, hey, we got to make sure we get that cleared up before we figure that. And then, <laughs> never did I think we'd have to clear up AM and PM. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was ready this morning. I thought we were at seven thirty this morning. <laughs> oh man, that was that was good. Like you, you, you definitely threw me off. But hey, it's a story, right? Now it's a story. We got, I got a story now. Hey, now I got to clear it up. Hey, we're doing PM, guys. We're n- now I got to make sure we do that. <laughs> and, and, and here's why: it's because Armando and I, we don't get paid to do baseball-related things, so we have to do it after our regular jobs yes <laughs> oh, of course yeah, yeah. This, this is prime time too you know, yeah. be, who would be listening at 8 30 in the morning <laughs> exactly, yeah exactly uh yeah man for sure for sure man so um so let, let's go through let's go through you kind of your resume man give you i'm gonna try to give a little background so you're part of the denver browns organization right uh semi-pro team correct yeah independent semi yeah in, okay and you're the gm is that right? I, I own the ball club, yeah, and the GM, of course, that mm-hmm. I am. Okay. And then you also have a company called Pro Positive Yoga, right? 
I, I sure do. Yeah, we're uh, really a consulting agency to Major League Baseball teams in the world of yoga. And we've specialized in putting on big yoga events at Major League Baseball stadiums. But uh, I've also been lucky enough to provide yoga to 25 40 man rosters also during spring training. And uh, it's been kind of a dream come true in order to, to, to have the access that I do to Major League Baseball for, some, for doing something that I love. Um, I'm, I'm pretty blessed. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think that um, anything that, any, like us, you know, right, we do this for fun. I mean, we don't get paid for this. And anything you could do for fun and get paid for is definitely uh, something. Well, it's uh, not really a job, right? I feel, it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it if you enjoy it, right? I mean, uh, but definitely with exactly. us, to us, it feels like it's a job. I'm just not getting paid. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I was going through the website, and I was noticing that, yeah, you've, like, you know, you had events at almost every big park there is i mean all these big teams you know dodgers I, uh, I think i saw i don't know if i saw the yankees but i saw the dodgers which i'm a dodgers fan so i saw that and you've been through a bunch of different stadiums and then i saw some photos where like you had like the whole state um, you know everybody on the field you know doing uh, yoga we had two thousand people on the field in pittsburgh one year oh, which wow. was the most that we've ever had two thousand is a big number um but we would average between 500 and a thousand most dodger games we get a thousand people out there um, but yeah, I've been really fortunate to do that with nearly half of Major League Baseball. And uh, it's funny how when one team does something, everybody else wants to do it. So it's just kind of being at the right place at the right time. I think you got a. I think you got a pretty good niche because I mean, I, I've a few years ago, you know, as as, as you know, I mean, we're, uh, as we get older, like you know, you don't stretch as much. Uh, you're not as um, limber as you used to be. And I I remember a few years ago, I was um, uh, experimenting with yoga, and I took a one or two yoga classes, and man, I had a good time. And 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 I I don't know why. I honestly, don't know why I didn't continue it. You know what I mean? But I think it's uh, I think it's important. So I, that that definitely piqued my interest when I saw your profile. The first time uh, I was introduced to it, I, I just happened to be, uh, I was working for an arena football team. I worked for the Colorado Rockies for a number of years uh, and luckily won a national championship with the team uh, in the last month that I was with the team before I went on to work for John Elway for his arena football team. And that's where I found yoga. They had a yoga instructor for the team. And it wasn't just any yoga instructor. This guy's worked with Barry Bonds. He's worked with Joe Montana, worked with John Elway, worked with Shaquille O'Neal. And he was the first uh, man that turned me into, on to yoga. And uh, serendipitous because, you know, while well, what's occurred with me in sports and yoga, but uh, that was back in 2007. And um, it was about 2012 that a really unfortunate occurrence happened that uh, kind of pushed me further into baseball and yoga. But I don't know if you remember a ball player named Ryan Friel, played for the Cincinnati Reds and Cubs. But he uh, was the first Major League Baseball player to be diagnosed with CTE. And oh, wow. of course, you know, that's usually only diagnosed after someone commits suicide. And that's, that's, that was the case with Friel. And uh, it really hit me hard because I was a big fan of his. You know, he was just like a guy that probably never should have made it to the major leagues. He hustled so hard, they couldn't keep him out of the major leagues. And he played like five positions, and he'd go flying into the stands to catch foul balls. He just, guy hustled so hard, and I just became a fan of the guy. Right. And uh, it was a couple days before Christmas that I'd, I'd read an article that he had, uh, he had passed away, and it just hit me really hard. And I was working for Major League Baseball at the time, and it occurred to me that I have, I was doing these yoga teacher trainings and being involved in yoga in, in a more uh, in-depth level than ever before in my practice. And it occurred to me that I, I have, I'm in kind of a unique place of being in the yoga world and the baseball world. And I just tried to bring them together. And that's kind of how this all started with pro positive yoga. Yeah. You know, you don't, when you think of baseball and yoga, you don't think of mixing the, the two, but, uh, you know, it's important, right? Uh, because baseballs, we, we say this a lot, it, it's such a, a mental game, you know. It, it's physical to a certain degree, but it's just so mental. And I think that yoga probably plays a big part of that, helping you to, to mentally mentally get through some issues and be ready for the game. Would, would you agree? 
it's it's more mental than than anything yeah uh i i think it's the um the mental side gets more overlooked than any other part of training and it's not even like by a little bit um i do think that if there's not some um way of because you fail in baseball all you do is basically you know come back to the dugout from the from home plate three times out of four if not you know less or more you don't have to tell me (laughs) (laughs) it's a really hard game and it's hard to get over your failure so if you're not good at doing that you're not going to excel no offense to pitchers but i mean they've proven that that you don't even have to be an athlete, right? Oh, dude. <laughs> rep, rep. You know what, dude? You, you, you know you what? You just bonded with Armando <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. You, you just bonded with me, bro, bro, bro. You just, you know what, bro? I'm gonna share every fucking piece of content you have. You're, 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 bro, we on the same page. We on the same. I probably, page. I probably offended about forty percent of our listeners, but for sure. Um... I mean, hey, look, I'm gonna tell you this. That having that having that mentality is probably a direct correlation of why I get hit so much, right, Cody? Is that, is that what Cody says? Is that in your memes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my memes and my and my, and my uh, attitude towards pitchers is why I get hit a lot. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with you. And and, and you know what? Um, and I, you know, I know earlier I was talking about the the stretching part, but there is a mental part to it because I I, I remember. And this is crazy. If nobody's ever done yoga, I, I suggest you try it. But, I, I, you know, this is when I had a membership at Lifetime Fitness. And uh, I took the yoga class. And, man, I came out relaxed. Like, it was weird. It was, like, the weirdest. Like, I I, I always thought um, that, it, that uh, I don't want to say phony, but I, I didn't think you could get nothing out of it. But, man, my mind was different. My mind, like, I was so relaxed. Armando, it's scientific. I mean, if you spend an hour breathing deeply, you're going to have more oxygen in your brain, in your blood. You're going to naturally have lower blood pressure. Um, it's 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 basic science. So, yeah. um, you know, nothing else. Um, if you take just you know, I'll, I'll shift gears a little bit. I mean, but partly why the Denver Browns are successful is that we've had an intention since the beginning. And when you're practicing yoga, similarly, you have an intention, right? You're you're there's a sort of. Um, way of um letting go of the outcome and just going through the motions but knowing that you're heading in a certain direction right and uh you're able to kind of if nothing else uh turn your mind off for a little bit and 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 actually focus on the the whatever you're physically doing and uh with with the browns golly is 2007 uh my college teammate wanted to start a baseball team that did things differently. Um, and the first thing he did, thankfully, was ask me to be the manager. And uh, his name is Gino, Gino Grasso. And uh, we started this team in 2007, and we've been rather successful in it. But our, our mission statement from the beginning has been to break the mold of amateur and semi-professional baseball in the city of Denver by being the best in everything we do from the field to the community. And it's our 16th season and we've won seven city championships. We've been in the city championship 10 of the last 15 years. And um, it's all, it comes down to what we intended on doing at, at the start, right? So I think, you know, I, I was so impressed with baseball down in Houston. Now, you guys would, it, you guys raised the bar, uh, and the fact that you play every night and uh, the talent level—I was blown away. Uh, I would absolutely love to to see a baseball scene in Denver like there is in Houston, um, but we're we're a long ways away from that. Yeah, I mean, we're, we've we've talked about it on the show that you know we're lucky in here in Houston that we got so much baseball. I mean, any. Whatever your whatever your level of play is, whatever day you want to play, whatever is going on in your life, there's a there's a league for you. Whatever your price point is, there's a league for you. So we're definitely lucky with the talent that's out here and and the amount of baseball. I mean, it sucks with the weather that we get too much rain, but you know it, it is what it is. Um, I was looking through the you know Denver Browns uh, site, and then so you guys. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong here, but being in the last 10 championships in the last 12 seasons, is that right? Uh, correct. We've been in 10 championship games since 2010. 
2010. So, yeah, so 10 and 12 years we've been in the city championship. Our first three years, uh, I think we made it to the semifinal and then uh, quarterfinal and semifinal. And since 2010, we've been in the mix. Uh, the championship has actually gone through us. So even the years that we have lost in the semi, the team that beat us went on to win. So uh, we've, we've definitely been competitive. Uh, you could you could say that. How how big of a, a league is that? That that's just it's an independent league, right? Yeah, National Adult Baseball Association. So there's so many different divisions, uh, and then there's another Liga Latina within Denver that has about forty to fifty teams itself. So altogether. We're talking about about 150 baseball teams, but I want to take a step back. This is not all competitive like it is in Houston. There's there's uh, many different age levels, and within those age groups, you have uh, aluminum bat, wood bat, and then different uh, right. rec levels within that. So w what we play in is the 25 wood double A, which is the, uh, the most competitive 25 and over league wood bat. My uh, Mile High Green Elephant team plays in the 18 AAA, which is the most competitive 18 and over uh, wood bat. And my Browns team had won that city championship uh, the 18 over six different times. And we bumped up to the 25 wood in 2020 and won it uh, our first year against a longtime rival of ours, the, the Bulls. And we lost last year to the Red Sox. And the Red Sox went on to beat the Bulls. Oh, so. Okay. But, yeah, there's, uh, I think, 12 teams in the top division, 25 this year, and 10 to 12 teams in the 18 AAA. Um, so it's a little bit, a little schism, and you could argue which team, which league's more competitive. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, we, those arguments can be made everywhere. Right? Yeah, uh, we, we get yeah. into those all the time. <laughs> yeah, it, it's probably not exclusive to Denver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so um, how it's long universal. are you guys? Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, we all we all have uh, our egos and stuff. Uh, where? Um, how long is your season? Because I mean, I know you guys got winners, winners. I mean, we complain about this. Uh, I mean, at least I do. Maybe not everybody, but I complain about this forty degree weather. But you guys got some real winners out there. Yeah, we do. You know, we, we try to get outside at least once a month, but for the guys that want to. But it's all, you know, p p weather permitting. We'll, uh, we'll get out there the first week of April for opening day, but we start scrimmaging here in about a week or two, depending on the team and, and the field, uh, field availability. But we work out indoors until then, so... It's just kind of hit or miss until the snow melts. Right, right. So, it, it's funny you mentioned April as your opening season, right? We just yeah. had our opening season last weekend, okay? So middle of February. Wow. Uh, and, it, you know, the weather wasn't bad that weekend, but this past weekend it was rainy and it was in the 40s. And uh, all the – well, I would say 90% of the games were, were canceled because of the weather. It was just too wet to play. So – uh, it it is hit or miss down here, and it, it can get cold. But I would imagine you really don't get used to that, right? I mean, living in Denver, playing baseball that long, do you ever get used to that weather? Because I don't think I, well, I, I could do it. You know, we go skiing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we just we have other things to do, you know. Yeah. But uh, I, it's it's not something that I'll ever get used to. I mean, that's although you know I have to hand it to you the week. That I was down that weekend. I was down in Houston. <laughs> yeah. That was about the coldest weekend of baseball I can remember, especially Saturday. That uh, was bone chilling. I was. Yeah. It was. Whoops. You know, it's funny. You you mentioned skiing. Uh, I like to snowboard, and I brought out all of my ski gear that weekend, <laughs> right? Because. I mean, it was what thir with the wind chill. Yeah, maybe, like low thirties. Yeah, yeah, low thirties. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. felt like I was on the mountain. Like, where's the snow? We had three or four games that day too, and it was a long day. Yeah, it was. Um, it, it was brutal. Yeah, so it was so fun. Uh, no regrets. You know, I'm glad I got to meet you guys, and I would never have met you otherwise. So, it was, you know, thanks, Andrew Dunn. Yeah, what? That so that was, actually, that was going to be my next question. How did you hook up with with Andrew? Oh, you know, uh, I, it'd be Bill Rogan. Uh, Bill Rogan introduced us oh, a couple of years ago probably when Bill first started managing with, with Tucson. 
um, is probably when I first came across to Andrew. And we have I met him once over at the airport here in Denver when he was coming into town, and we've just been friendly ever since. And uh, it, it's a good relationship only due to the fact that um, I'm in need of baseball players from time to time. And sometimes these Pecos League uh, castaways, if lack of other words, words will – come through Denver. So thank you, Manny Ramirez, in fact, for already turning us on to uh, one Pecos League ball player, uh, Ian Krahanowitz, who's going to hopefully throw a few innings for the Browns before he reports to uh, uh, Roswell. So Awesome. Yeah, I, I saw that. I saw that announcement, you know, uh, you know, Manny, Manny wants to get on the show, too. So hopefully uh, at some point we'll get him on the show, too. Uh, you know, he, he helps, you know. Uh, I, I saw that he got on with you guys, and then you know, of course, he he plays and manages, helps manage the the Apollos there in Coastal. So, um, you know, shout out to to Manny on that. Um, so, what's the coldest weather or temperature you've played in in Denver? Oh, I remember a, a November tournament in maybe twenty. It was twenty twelve because it was the last game that I was uh, managing. Uh, so I managed the Denver Browns from two thousand seven to two thousand twelve. And it was in the 30s, and it was windy. Uh, and we had, uh, I think, two days of double headers, and, and we were all wearing face masks back before anyone wore face masks because it was so cold that weekend. Um, I, I look back at some pictures from that weekend. I'm like, wow, we were like way, like ahead of the COVID fashion, <laughs> uh, like 10 years before. <laughs> Just because it was so cold, but we were in a championship photo. Of course, we could take a photo after the, the last game. But um, yeah, that was that was probably the, the coldest that I recall. And uh, I don't think I even played in the last game because my back was so tight. And thankfully, I'm the manager, so I you know I write the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> but it would probably have been better for me to have been on the field just because I'd have been moving, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. We'll use the term, hey get to the field early and, and warm up right but i in that weather there's no warming up i, no. I, I you know <laughs> i don't think that's gonna to, happen get to the field and cool off <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. and you know armando said this before but that coastal weekend is one of the the times that we were glad just to be watching and not playing because yeah. you know it, it, it was that miserable but you know yeah. we we love this game and if someone asked us to play we probably would have even yeah. though it was that cold yeah, we all love it. We are, and and that's why we're there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I'm, I'm. Go ahead. Well, I, I I'm I'm getting out there this year, and I I haven't been a player in a number of years, but I'm playing in my 45 and over league for a team called the Grizzlies this year. So I'm really excited. Actually, I've been hitting the gym and hitting yoga more often, and actually taking BP because nice. for a number of years my Browns were were such a ball club that I would. I wasn't good enough to play for my own team. <laughs> no, no. It, 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 that, that, that happens everywhere, believe it, it or not. It does. It, yeah. it, here, here's the thing. I'll say this. You're self-aware, right? You know where you belong, <laughs> right? And where you don't belong. So, exactly. I mean, you're, you're not putting yourself at the four-hole hitter, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> for <the> Browns. <laughs> but you appreciate that you do have the power to bat yourself, number one, and pitch every inning, yet you don't, right? <laughs> It's funny, every team, you know, well, not every team, but every league or every division's usually got one of those guys who just, you know, won't won't ever relinquish uh, being the ace on the team or <laughs> the four hole or whatever it might be. The short, of course, he's the manager. Yeah, the short, like if you're not pitching, you know, you're not pitching your shortstop. If you're not, uh, you know, four, four hole, you're number one, you know, you've been one. So, yeah, we, yeah. They're, they're, they're everywhere. Um but so so what's what's your position cuz I was looking so when I was going through your inaugural season you know in 2007 I saw you had that player manager so I was trying to see like where you were like what what uh, your position was I didn't see it so what's your position I'll tell you um I've played everywhere and uh and literally everywhere I I I caught in college I I wouldn't say I caught a lot in college but I I uh caught my senior year in high school because we had no other catcher so then I got recruited as a catcher, um, but I was a shortstop growing up. I was always a, I played little league ball, always on the left side of the diamond, uh, third or short, um, and then started pitching because I had a decent arm. Uh, and then I played corner outfield spots because uh, I could run a little bit. And uh, this was just a baseball junkie growing up. So whatever I could do to 
improve myself as a ball player, I would do. I'd take ground balls a second. Uh, I'd work on my footwork at first uh, just because I, I just love the freaking game, right? Um, yeah. And that probably worked against me uh, when I got to college because I was rather versatile and I never really like had one position, right? Yeah. So, uh, but in, in adult league ball, I'd become kind of the lowest common denominator in, in recruiting. Like if you're going to do something on my team, you got to do it better than me. Yeah. So if you're, if you're going to play second, if you're going to play right, if you're going to catch, you better do it better than me or else you're not going to be on the team. I'm not going to let my own playing time just, you know, go by the wayside. So what it ended up doing was making our team really competitive and, um, and, and ultimately, it ended up making me less and less of a player and more of a manager only. But um, I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, that that, that makes sense. Right? That, yeah, that, that reminds me of that movie, uh, The Sandlot, where the kid that went pro in that in the movie, like he wanted to play every position so, so he could practice every position so yeah. he can get really good at it. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's and there's very few people that can do it. I mean, there's 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 you got to have that. Uh, you, one, you got to be athlete, but I think too, and I hope you agree with me on this, is that it's not just being able to stand there, right, and catch the ball. It's like knowing when you're the cutoff, knowing when doing a bun situation, knowing situational baseball where some of these guys that sometimes say, "Hey, I play everywhere," like it's not just holding the glove and just standing there. It's like, you got to know where you need to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you, you really you play can't everywhere? Run a double cut, you, gotta, you can't run a double cut. Or if you're playing first and you don't know where to be, you're not going to help our team. Yeah. yeah you're um, not a first so, baseman, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. You, you got to know where to be. I, uh, you brought up the sandlot and I'm, I'm so fortunate that I grew up in a neighborhood that had just a love for baseball. I grew up around kids that just like lived and breathed, whether we were playing catch or wiffle ball or whatever it was, we were just involved in baseball. And uh, I'm the same age as Roy Halladay, and uh, rest in peace. And we, I grew up playing against Roy since I was like six years old. And he made things just hyper competitive, you know. We knew that guy was special from, from an early age. And a buddy of mine named Eric Absher, who ended up going on to play at Wichita, Wichita State, and he was an all Colorado player of the year, his senior year. He was my best friend. We grew up two doors down. And that's just, we lived and breathed baseball. And it wasn't just about being a better physical player, but like mentally, and this is before mindfulness was a thing. I mean, mentally as a student of, of the X's and O's, strategy, where to be, situations, you know, that, that end of baseball had such depth and weight that we just, we just ate it up. And um, thankfully, I had a, an older brother, uh, one of my older brother's best friends played minor league baseball, and he ended up late in his minor league baseball career, he became a, a player manager, player coach for the Amarillo Dillas um, back in the, the old Dilla Villa in Amarillo back before. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what, I think they're the sod, farm, the sod something or other. Now, I don't know what they are. Sod ponies. Um, but I used to go to some Amarillo Dilla games and hang out around minor league baseball and just kind of soak up professional baseball at an early age. So I just started like really uh, try to learn what winning baseball was all about from like the age of like 11, 12, 13. Um, so that's kind of what kind of put me on a little trajectory of like wanting to work in baseball, wanting to understand the game uh, from a historical standpoint and why things are the way they are. So. Yeah, that, that's great. You know, that's when those passions develop early on. You know, and, and when you have that desire and you continue to work at it, it's just you, you have such an edge on everybody else, you know, that you come in contact with the sport. And you've been doing it that, that, that much longer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I got a question here from uh, the audience. Uh, the snow game ever? Have you ever played in the snow? Uh, yes, it's been a long time. I remember playing a game in, in high school. Uh against uh is either conifer or evergreen that we were full on playing in the snow and we had we had to and we were already there the field hadn't gotten snowed out yet but we we're yeah it was play it was playable because the snowflakes were falling so softly <laughs> wow. but we knew the time was running out too because right. we were losing light and 
Yeah, um, you can't feel the ground ball in snow. I would. Can imagine. you imagine it's yeah. a white ball in the? <laughs> that's when you want the ball not to be white, right? Like yeah. you wanted some dirt on it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, but right. here's another question. Let's see here. Um, another question from David uh, Cotton. Uh, do you guys uh, you guys play small ball up there? Does do, do the Denver Browns play small ball? Do you still believe in that? A hundred percent. Are you using that temperature yeah. to hit bombs? <laughs> you know, the, the the ball does fly here, but uh, you know every game is like a snowflake. <laughs> um, in situations, you might have to, but I, I am of the mind that uh, you know Earl Weaver, right? Uh, get get guys on base and hit, get the guy that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Um, I, I'm not as much uh, prone to move the guy over if I have a lineup like I've had in years past. Um, but I've thankfully had ball players that are so such well-rounded that they can lay down a bunt and get on base uh, late in the game, and uh, because they're they're really good baseball players, right? So, you know, I'm I'm I was the president of the Society for American Baseball Research here in Denver for a number of years, four years. Um, I understand the statistical side of, of things. Um, I do apply that to the Denver Browns, but I'm more old school sort of scouting and looking at, you know, what what pitchers were facing and, and not being hard and fast in every rule. Um, I think, you know, our manager, Mike Anisco, uh, I let him be the manager anymore. I get him the best players that I can, and I let him write the lineup. I let him be the field sort of manager. Uh, we do have a extremely adept captain in Trent Cutler, and he will uh, – you know, put things on from time to time. One of our biggest veterans, Matt Jarepker, he he uh, he knows situations and knows when we need to play small ball. And when we're in certain parts of our lineup, it makes sense. When we're in certain parts of our lineup, it doesn't make sense. Right. So it it, it all depends, right? Yeah. No, definitely. There's definitely got to be a strategy, right, Cody? Yeah. I mean, there's a a time and place for everything. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. We got another question here. Do, 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 do. Um, let's see, let's see, what was the question? Uh, do you, do you guys play any exhibition games against the Colorado Springs Snow Sox? I've never heard of them, so I don't, I don't know. Snow Sox are a new Pecos League team as of, uh, two years ago. Okay. And, uh, no, we have not. I don't, I've never entertained it either. Um, I, no offense to that organization, but we actually, um, wouldn't be a good fit for them only because of them being um, a pro team that plays a set schedule, whereas we play only mostly Sundays with a few exceptions of playing some exhibition games against a college, uh, one of two college teams, the Boulder Collegians out of Boulder or the Fort Collins Foxes. Um, those, are the, those are the main exhibition games that we play, mm. and they're, they're usually uh, uh, annual things. Okay, but I, I I would be open to playing them. Um, do they? I don't think they're. They had trouble with attendance last year, so I, I, I'm, I would love for them to come to Denver, and we might be able to actually get them some fans. But I don't think we're interested in going to the Springs. Right. How far is that from you? It's about an hour. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, but uh, and we would definitely entertain them coming to Denver if they wanted to play us before their season started. Yeah, that's interesting. It's a little, little late. It might be better 2023. Right. Or, yeah. Right. So uh, let me give you an update. I, uh, while we were talking, I, I, I set up a poll. I said, uh, are, are pitchers athletes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm anxious to hear the results. <laughs> Not a lot of votes, but uh, we got outvoted. It says 73% says yes. <laughs> I have a feeling we have a lot of pictures in this chat today. <laughs> oh man! I don't know when when you're staring down 95. I mean, there's got to be some athleticism, right? <laughs> you're gonna get us started. You're gonna, you're gonna get me, man, started, right? Because I'm like, you got you got natural talent. You didn't work for that 95, but okay. okay. So here, here's another question. <laughs> here's another question. Uh, you probably worked for those two miles an hour. You had 93, and you probably worked to get those extra two. You can see that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. Uh, so, um, 
how did you, uh, David Khan wants to know how did you guys do against the the, the, the college teams out there? You said you, you did some exhibition games with them. Yeah, we've played the Boulder Collegians now the last three three years or four seasons minus COVID. So three three of the last four years we've played the Collegians. We lost to them the first year in a pretty close game. No, no, no. They they beat us pretty handily the first game. The second time we played them, we beat them. Um, and thanks to a player from the Pecos League that plays for us, uh, Zach Baldini hit a grand slam in the ninth oh, wow. uh, to put us up. And um, and that, that was a difference maker. And then we lost to them last season. And I was just talking to their uh, pitching coach today, uh, Mark Knudsen, former big leaguer, played for the Rockies. Uh, we're talking about uh, – get him on the schedule this season again and hopefully hopefully uh doing a home and away one game in boulder one game in denver okay did you uh so did you grow up in uh, colorado are you you from there did you go to school out there i did yeah i uh, was born in kansas city my family moved here when i was five years old uh to littleton uh suburb of uh denver oh yeah and i uh went to heritage high school Played baseball there, uh, graduated in '95, and then uh, played a couple years of JUCO ball in La Junta, Colorado. Uh, and then after that, I, I lived in Aspen for a couple years. I uh, worked as a naturalist for part of that time for the Aspen Center for Environmental Studies. That's when I got introduced to uh, adult league baseball and won a couple uh, Western Slope uh, state championships playing for the Aspen Athletics. Uh, in the late 90s, and then uh, moved down to Denver, finished college, went to work for the Rockies, and that's when I started playing adult league baseball down here. Cool, cool. Um, I noticed you had a ring on. What, what, what was that? Was that from? Uh, uh, they... Rockies, 2007. Oh, okay, okay. National league championship. We, you know, lost the. We got swept by the, uh, by the, uh, Red Sox that year, but. Um, we had a good season, and that's actually what ended my time with the Rockies because John Elway had hired me to be his director of ticket sales for the arena football team here in town. Mm -hmm. And I, I initially said, no thanks, I, I'm a baseball guy. Right. Um, but he ended up making me an offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> and uh, I said, I'll take the job under one condition. I can't take it till the baseball season ends. And thankfully, I stayed on because uh, the Rockies needed me at the time. We were busier than we'd ever been uh, selling tickets for um, for you know playoff games, and uh, it was uh, one of the best experiences in uh, you know being a part of that run to the the World Series. So that was uh, kind of how I capped 2007 and went on to work in arena football. Interesting. Yeah, that's such a treat to be a part of baseball in, in, in any facet, right? You know, if you can't play, and, but you work for the organization, I mean, that's not a whole lot of people can say that. You know, that's just, sure. there's something rewarding about it. I think uh, I think at, at any point, like with us, I mean, any part of baseball we can be part of, we're going to be part of it. So yeah. um, let me ask you this. Is there any uh, John Elway story you can share that you're willing to share? Interesting story from him? I'm going to take that as a no. So, uh, next question, please. <laughs> he's a really, he's truly a legend in this city, you know. And, yeah, uh, for sure. For, for an endless amount of reasons. Uh, but he's uh, revered. And uh, I, I would have loved to have seen him play baseball. Uh, but he was, uh, may have been a Bo Jackson type of uh, talent, if only. But, uh yeah, working for him for the year that I did was really interesting. Uh, I never worked in football before. Uh, I wasn't used to the the cadence of the season, and the way uh, things sort of operated. Uh, it was very different for me, but it was a good experience overall. Uh, after working in football for the time that I did, and then I actually spent a couple years away from uh, all sports. I worked in telecom for two years, <laughs> and it was the most miserable <laughs> <laughs> miserable two years of my life and uh it made me really want to get back into baseball and that's when i went to the baseball winter meetings and ended up thankfully getting hired by major league baseball uh the first time i ever went to the winter meetings and uh i've been working in baseball ever since 
Nice. You know, Armando, he he doesn't think much of this, but uh, he actually faced a uh, a former NFL quarterback at at a tournament once, <laughs> and he I don't he didn't even know who the guy was. Why don't you tell him the story? Oh uh, <laughs> man, I forget the guy's name. What's the guy's name? He didn't even remember. He faced Doug Flutie at a no uh, kidding. Yeah, <laughs> he, he and he actually got a hit off of him at a tournament, uh, North Carolina. Uh, no, South Carolina. South Carolina, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man. San Diego quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, see, I had had no clue who this guy was. Everybody yeah. was making a, hey, that's, that's Flutie, that's Flutie. I'm like, I'm like I've heard that name because, you know, it's not a common last name. And, you know, and I, and, I, and I, he's definitely a competitor. You know, it's it's like I think when you get any athlete and you put them in a different sport, whether you basketball. I mean, you could, I mean, you could literally do table tennis, man. And the guys, you know, the, yeah. we're going to be competitive, right? We're going to be competitive. We're going to do what we got to do. I believe it. You know who was one of the better hitters in our league for a number of years? A guy named Reed Breeze. And he's Drew Breeze's brother. And uh, he, he played four years at Baylor. And uh, he tore up our adult league up here for a number of years. He was one of the toughest outs. But he's spinning image of Drew Brees. He looks just wow. like his brother. Huh. So it's always like kind of like intimidating seeing the guy that looked just like Drew Brees at the plate. Um, but he was good. You know it's funny because uh, every time I see a read, they're you, g- good at baseball for some reason. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> when he said that, I yeah. was like, "Hey, wait a minute!" I, I know it goes hand in hand. It seems. Yeah, we got a read out here that's a really good ball player yeah, too. There's a couple of them, I think. Oh, yeah. A buddy he, mine, he, he played for uh, uh, Houston Baptist, and his name was Reed. Was so, it? Yeah. 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 So yeah, to read, if you, I guess, I guess, tell Manny that if you see somebody with the last name Reed, pick them up. <laughs> or first name. Yeah. <laughs> or first name. Yeah. Or pick them up. You know. Oh. Uh, I think of Reed Ryan, who's from down there, way, your guys' way, isn't he? Uh, Nolan Ryan's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, there's another Reed. There he goes, yeah. another Reed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely for sure. Um, what I was gonna ask you. So when, when um, so you just come. You was this your was this your first time coming to Coastal Classic, or is, or, or you've been here a few times? This is my first time uh, in Houston since um, I'd gone to a Saber convention there. In, I think 20, 2014. So that was the last time. That was the first time I'd ever been to Houston in 2014. So I'd never been there for the coastal. Okay, and he and he picked the coldest days. Like he brought, you know, he might have been the reason. He brought winter with him. He brought the that cold weather. <laughs> that, that, that's a possibility. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it was definitely uh, you know. Uh, you know, watching you call the game was really interesting. You know, watching you and uh, oh, what was the other gentleman's name? Um, what was the other gentleman that was with you? I forgot his name. Bill, uh, Bill, Bill, Bill. Rogan. Yeah. yeah, Bill Rogan. Yeah. yeah. Watching you two guys call a game was interesting because it's something that me and Cody have kind of talked about. Uh, the, you know, we just kind of want to dabble in and, and um, uh, you know, just, you know, uh, you know, we like being around the game and, and we're there watching. You might as well just start, t- you know, practicing, you know, uh, talking, you know, talking to the mic and calling the game. Now, definitely it's not easy, but you guys make it look easy. You know, you guys did a really good job. And I think that's a... Uh, I think that adds a value to the video, right? When you're watching it live or you're watching it later. It, 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 it does. Uh, I think you got to kind of have some guide um, to know basically the situations, right? Everybody likes to watch baseball, but if you don't know the situation, you're lost. So um, it, it, to not be overbearing in that, to just kind of let the game unfold, kind of in Scully style, um, but to just sort of be a friend to the listener, right? Um, that's my style. Other people are more cavalier and ch- taking control. And I have a friend who's, in my opinion, the best baseball play-by-play announcer in the game. And if you if you get to listen to minor league baseball or you have MILB uh, app, he's the announcer for the Lansing Lugnuts, and um, he, he can paint a picture, and he is so talented at explaining to the listener and the viewer to just kind of just accent, putting an accent on everything. Um, and if you're a- able to convey that to the, the listener, you know, like, they care. They're already, like, going to be, like, interested in what you're talking about because you're so good at what you do. Um, I think that if you um, try too hard, you, you'll lose your your following. Um, you got to let the game be what what draws them in, 
and then you just kind of, um, you know, add to it how you can. Bill Rogan is genius at being a play-by-play announcer. I think I'm more just a color commentator. Um, <laughs> But there, there is a like difference, new right? <laughs> you, you, you have to know your role. And 100%. I think that it's just like being on the field. It, it's a position, and if you try to do more than what you're good at, it'll show. If you try to do less than what you're good at, you're not going to convey. So uh, it is kind of an art. I started live streaming Denver Browns games in 2016, and – when we started out, I was I was the only announcer we had, right? So I had to just I was kind of thrown into it. But uh, in in time, I was able to develop a partnership with the uh, um, Colorado Media School, which got it's got its own broadcasting department. And I started to get interns and started to get people that were really you know passionate about being play by play and color commentators. So that's been immensely helpful in trying to you know, raise our production level with our games because we've live streamed every one of our games, rain or shine, uh, the show must go on for since 2017 and and most of the games in 2016, I think. So um, it's pretty neat to be able to go back and watch our games. I mean, there's been some good ones. Um, So if the strike continues, you can just uh, (laughs) go go to our Facebook and watch our, our videos for, you know, there's probably a good... 80 games you could watch you know it's it's kind of like i think we said it before this is uh this is a, a time to shine for the amateur and semi-pro guys right i mean you know, mlb is not going on so and i could tell you this like last season it, you know astros seemed like they because we usually air this on tuesday night it just seemed like they would play every freaking tuesday night and we were always competing with the mm. with the astros so and you know here they're really big fans out here so it kind of sucked um but uh, I want to I want to say this uh, we got uh, uh, we got Joey out here one of our one of our listeners saying that uh, that you guys' calm demeanor while doing the play by play was gold. So he's complimenting right the way you know you guys and I and I agree because when, when I heard you when I heard you calling the game I was kind of like listening I'm like man this, you know this is cool like I'm trying to pick up some tips and tricks you know I I enjoyed uh, <laughs> some of Bill's comments uh, regarding questionable plays oh, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> that, that should or should not have been done and it was great because it was uh you know he, he's he's unbiased in his approach but those comments you know they were opinionated and that's what I loved about it like hey probably shouldn't have done that right and 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 this is why <laughs> oh man Bill Bill will speak his mind and yeah. he doesn't hold anything back I really appreciate that about him um and he's uh, yeah as you said opinionated he's a New Yorker and uh, he feels that there is a, a way things should be done, like many Yankee fans, like right, they're, they're <laughs> accustomed, accustomed to excellence. Right. Um, oh, so wow. I, yeah, Bill's a kick. He's going to do some of our games um, before he reports to to spring training for the Pecos League. Um, we're excited to have him. Hopefully, do a handful of games before he leaves. Yeah, that that'd be awesome, man. Because uh, you know. Like you said, he he would sit there. He would. It, it's like like you said, we all got to play our part, right? Like I I tell Cody, I like, hey, if we ever do this, Cody's gonna be a little bit more on the serious side. Like I I got to play my color part, right? But, uh, but you know, you know, Cody will chime in, you know, and 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 do these, uh, you know, you know, backhanded shots, maybe uh, <laughs> some shit going on. Well, it's it's great to be a couch <laughs> critic, right? I mean, it's so easy <laughs> when you're not the one out there making the mistake. But, but I remember you said I don't remember what you said, but I was I was uh, we were watching one of these games in the backfield, and uh, Matt, you had said you said something where you like you plugged in like the bat company or something, like oh that's a, oh he broke a bat, maybe you go to bestbatdeals.com, and I was like, dude, that was smooth. <laughs> like I was like, damn, I like that. <laughs> Well, be- baseball is a business, right? Yeah, yeah, for uh, sure. For sure. You know, that, actually, that's kind of a, a good segue because I did want to ask you about uh, uh, Hag Bat Company. Is that am I saying that right? What? Yeah, uh, got it. What? The, so, what? What's that about? I noticed that's on your your website. I was looking at it here, and they they look like some pretty neat bats. Um, do you, well, you, you guys uh, use those? I think we do. Yeah, almost. I wouldn't say exclusively. Uh, we've used a number of other bat companies. Uh, but Hague has been uh, probably our main uh, go-to for 10-plus years at least. Uh, 
at full disclosure, uh, that, that's my family's company. Uh, my my brother in law is Jim Haig. Oh, okay. And uh, that's the oldest baseball bat company in Colorado. Uh, started in uh, between 1998 and 2002. Uh, it was like kind of the, the, the sort of. Uh, uh, when it was structured, and I think they hit the ground in 2002. It was my nephew's idea. Uh, my nephew was only a, like a nine-year-old, ten-year-old child at the time, and he really was into baseball. But you know, it's a family thing, and he wanted to own a baseball bat company. So my brother-in-law fostered uh, this sort of passion to create this baseball business, and uh, and my my nephew's gone on to be a CPA, and he's got kids, and he doesn't. He's played for the Denver Browns. He won our first championship in 2010, and he won a he won a city championship. Or I'm sorry, he won a RMAX championship for Regis University, uh, the only one in school history. Uh, my my nephew was a good ball player, but uh, the Hague Back Company stemmed out of his idea to have a, ba- a baseball back company, and they've been fortunate to have this fiberglass sheathing that my brother-in-law patented probably 10 years ago and they outsource their technology to a lot of different back companies uh you name it actually um i'm sure you could probably within you can name five back companies and he works with with more than one of them um so it's been really fortunate to figure out how to sort of supplement this composite sheath that goes over uh maple wood bats so and that goes over the handle i assume that's what you yeah mean. it goes from the handle up to the barrel okay and wow. uh and it's you can see it on dovetail zinger de marini uh max bat uh have all used it or are using it uh axe handle a whole bunch of different bats uh, will use this technology now, and they have to go through Hague Bat to use it. So they've kind of found a niche. That's nice, man. That's cool to know that. Do they? Uh, do you, do they have? A, or you guys have a, like a retail, a brick and mortar, uh, or is it just uh, online sales? Strictly online. Okay. Oh, the reason I ask is I'm actually going to Colorado next uh, next week, and uh, uh, you know, if you did, I, I'd swing by and maybe pick one up because <laughs> there is always an excuse to buy a new bat, right? In my opinion, and I, agree. I, and I think a lot of people can agree with me for sure. There's a hand a handful of stores in Denver that that offer them. Okay. Um, you might want to email Jim, my brother-in-law, to see exactly where. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's neat because I, I saw that too on his on his site, and I was kind of wondering about that. So. That's an interesting technology that they have on the bat. I mean, I guess whatever it takes. It would be nice to have it on my bat, right? Right. Uh, poor Armando. He uh, opening season. He or opening day. He breaks two bats. And, and, and you know, <laughs> and, and here's the thing, man. Like, I, this and he's, he's not a bat breaker. I'm not I a bat breaker. You know, because it, it sounds like right. Like, oh, come on, this guy probably breaks bats. No, I, I don't break bats. And it's just for that to happen two in one game. I'll just sit there going, man. And like, but oh. like Cody said, person that came to mind. Well, I got more excuse to buy more bats, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, you know Andrew Dunn. Um, yeah, but exactly. <laughs> best bat, best bat deal dot com. That's it. Which you yeah, know, yeah. you know what's 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 interesting is that's how I met. He sold me my first wood bat. You know, he he don't he's, he's met thousands of people. He probably don't remember this, but I, I uh, had never uh, until I got to Houston. Never had played with the wood bat before, and I got an old hickory from him. And um, I remember like it's, it's it was so stupid. Like I didn't want to pay the ten dollar like. Um, shipping fee so i'm like hey man can we meet up somewhere and he met me <laughs> up somewhere and I, I and he showed me the bats right because i'm like i'm i'm new to wood bats so he, you know we're in the back of his truck and he's showing me like all these bats and let's check this one out check this one out and i, and I, I just landed it on old hickory and that bat, bat lasted me for i think a, a two seasons maybe three seasons uh before it finally it finally broke but uh, that's how i met met him but it, it was he sold me my first uh wood bat it's pretty interesting I, I know you had to redeem yourself. You know, I'm sure it lasted two or three seasons. Of course it did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, hey, can't I mean, broke when you can't break when you don't swing it, right? Hey, you know what? You know what I mean? Like, right? The, you strike out a lot. That means you strike out a lot. Right? You have to. You have to analyze. You have to read into what I said, right? Now, now it's it, it's uh it's funny, man, because you know um, a lot of, and I'm sure you've seen this with all the you know experience you have in baseball, but. 
a lot of people will blame the bat, right? Hey, oh, the bat, this is a cheap bat, this, that, love, nah, man. I mean, I, I, I batted with, you know, maple, bamboo. Uh, I mean, I'll stay away from ash personally, but, yeah. uh, but, uh, how, how many guys come back to the dugout and say that that pitcher, man, <laughs> that guy, that guy diced me up, you know, <laughs> very rarely. It's always the bat. You it's know? always the bat. It's always the bat. And then, you know, of course, you know, and, and you know, and, you know, you know, for, uh, you know, for for a batter, you know, you know, you're getting a home run. That's like your your kind of like your peak your, your peak performance. But for a pitcher, it's a strikeout and breaking your bat. That's that's what they look for. <laughs> He's looking mm-hmm. to cost you money. Yeah, a bunch of jerks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, cool. So Cody, you posted it on there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, uh, let's plug away, right? Yeah. We we just we somebody was asking about the bat, so we we we, we put it in the chat. Yeah. So. Uh, Hag Hag Hagbatco.com dot com or Hag. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's Hague. Hague. Yeah, okay. H A A G. Yeah, two A's. H A A G. Uh, Batco. dot com. It's okay. kind of an odd one, but that's that's how you find it. Um, I am working on a new project. Uh, my second book called uh, the Colorado Baseball Encyclopedia, and I'm hoping that that should be ready by opening day next year. Um, but my first book it came out about ten years ago, and it's simply called Baseball in Denver. And I'd say it's available wherever books are sold. That's the ca- that's the case in Denver. It's not available wherever books are sold in Houston. Right. <laughs> you often hear but, that uh, term, so yeah, right. <laughs> you know, you know the the um the, we got we got a ball player out there, Paul. He wrote a book, and you know, and you know, hey, I wrote a book. I'm saying, all right, you know, like I'll support you, okay? So I, you know, wh- where how did Amazon start? Right, selling books, right? Mm-hmm. So I I went on there and I said, hey, I'd like to purchase this book. That that book never came to my place. I've never had anything come missing, you know. So nobody would steal nothing off my porch, you know. There's a first time for everything, but <laughs> first time for everything, right? But it never came. And then they said, hey, man, you know, we we, we lost it or something, and they just refunded my money. And I'm sitting there laughing. I'm like, man, out of all the millions and billions of things that Amazon, you know, sells, I get every single one. But the one time, and the only time I ever ordered a book from Amazon, I never got it. <laughs> the thing that they should be good at, because that's, that's what they're known. That's what, what they're known, known for. for yeah. So uh, we'll we'll look for your we'll look for your book, and um, hopefully, for some of the bookworms out there, we'll maybe you know purchase it and and and, and take a take a read on there. Uh, so is it historical well, the, baseball in Denver? The, is that right? The, the history of baseball in Denver is okay. pretty deep. Um, the first very the very first professional sports team in the state of Colorado was the 1879 Denver Brown Stockings. So the name the Denver Browns goes back to the 18 1870s. Oh wow! Um, and uh, there was a, a tournament in Denver called the Denver Post Tournament that was really uh, kind of revolutionized baseball in some ways. Uh, it was the first tournament that uh, had numbers on uniforms. It was the first uh, tournament to have uh, uh, organized baseball under lights. Uh, and organized baseball meaning, I should, I'm using that term loosely. Um, and it was the first tournament in over 30 years, close to 40 years, that reintegrated baseball. About 15 years before Jackie Robinson, we had black African-American teams playing against white teams, players and uh, black players and white players playing on the same team. That happened here in Denver. Oh, wow. So a lot of folks are kind of unaware that Denver had such a, a deep history that it does. But um, I'm quite proud of that. Awesome. You know, if, if uh, after after this call, man, if you can uh, shoot me over a link or something and I'll post it. Um, that, that's kind of interesting. Uh, I mean, it's always good to know about history about baseball, man. I mean, it's, I mean, we, you know, uh, a few times um, I, I would sit there and, and, and uh, I watched a couple of guys one time at a field, you know, play cricket, right? They were playing cricket. And, you know, a couple of us were like, oh, man, you know, kind of talking shit a little bit like, oh, look, they're playing cricket. But it's like you forget that's where it, that's where it started. That's where baseball started from. Those are the roots, right? I mean, you, you might be talking shit now, but that's where it started from, you know. Well, it, it, there's derivatives of different bad ball games that you could say baseball, baseball, two words, came from. Uh, but it, it, it's uniquely American. Uh, baseball was definitely created uh, w- within the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. It happened here. Now, yeah. There were games like Rounders. Uh, there were games, uh, um, I'm trying to think of other names, that uh, 
cat cat ball or scat all different kinds of names that came before baseball that were kind of influences on it yeah but i'd say baseball started in the elijah fields uh knickerbocker baseball club in like the 1840s okay. uh, didn't did, didn't start at cooperstown like everyone thinks oh interesting there you go look at that. learning something today it's what it's all about. That's what it is. Right? Man. That's, that, that, that's that's only due to John Thorne's research. Uh, Saber, Saber uh, uh, one of the most heroic uh, baseball researchers there is. Uh, he's the official historian of Major League Baseball, and, and he's the one that kind of unearthed a lot of the, or I should say, debunked the Cooperstown myth. And um, he, he's a genius in photographic memory to that to boot, um, but. When it comes to, you know, how things came to be, whether like something like around the horn, you know, like throwing the ball around the horn, like how did that come to be? You know, like just random things that you think you don't even think about in the baseball nomenclature. You know, they all came from somewhere. Yeah. Well, where did they come from? This is one of the things that have been fascinating to me. So uh, that's partly why I had an interest in Sabre, uh, the Society for American Baseball Research uh, at, a, at a younger age. Give me, give me ducks on a pond. Do you know where that came from? Where what came from? Ducks on a pond. There's ducks on the pond. Have you heard that? Is that, is that used in Colorado? I have. I, oh, oh, yeah, used all the time. Um, I, I feel like uh, I, I've heard where it came from, but I, mean, I know like Billy Martin was a love to hunt ducks, but I'm not <laughs> sure if that started in the 1950s, New York Yankees or not. Um, but I can only imagine because, you know, Rogers Hornsby was a duck hunter too. Um, it probably, it probably comes from, you know, some baseball player that was a hunter, you know, probably in the 1800s, if you, if you look back, but I, I actually don't know. Do you know? No, hell no, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't hear it. I didn't really hear it till like, uh, and this is dumb, but I didn't hear it till like, I think two seasons ago. Someone's like, there's ducks on a pond. And I know what he was trying to say, but I'm like, what the fuck does ducks got to do yeah. with the baseball? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, it's like, it's like you said, Reb, it's been around so long that, there's been a hand that like every you know generation like they have their stamp on it one way or another and who knows where it came from but it's just it's all assimilated into what it is now yeah yeah i yeah. mean there's a fish, great fish documentary fish. uh i don't know you you may have seen it and i think john thorne has, has mentioned in it uh i've got it it's really good uh, it really goes back it's the uh yeah. the kim burns uh special yeah, yeah the pbs the P baseball uh, baseball yeah. documentary oh, i love that john, yeah. john was integral in the making of that yeah uh, he was he was kim burns sort of right hand uh right hand guy yeah so. Man, I, I love that documentary, man. I could watch that thing over and over, man. It was just watching the history of baseball. Like and it's like I think they went to the tenth inning, right? I don't did they go past yeah. that? Uh, yeah, the tenth well I love they need to do it an eleventh inning. Right. right? I, I agree. Watching. I agree. No, they do. I just it was just like I was just so yeah. drawn into it. It it's fascinating. The history of baseball. I mean it's it's uh I mean you just like you said, you know, uh, there's so many weird like sayings like you know i the one i used to always make fun of was like uh, keep an eye on the ball i'm like i have two eyes why would i only keep one eye on the ball like yeah you know, i say stupid <laughs> things like that <laughs> i never even thought about that <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh man and i know this is on your website uh and there was something about yogi Berra, maybe uh, just you know you can't think when you're up there Right? Like, no, you got to think about it. No, you have no time to think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's all about reaction. It is about reaction, I think. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you, get, you get different schools of thought, right? Some people are like, hey, you got to have an action plan. You know, some, you know, I know some ball players, when they sit up there, they think about, hey, what what is a pitcher going to pitch me? What, what's, what's, this is this count, this is that count, what am I going to do? Um, I got these people on base, and then there's people like, I mean, for me, I'm just a reaction. Like, if I see the ball and I can hit it, I'm going to go for it, you know? Uh, I know there's an edge provided if you can guess what he's going to throw, um, but not for me, you know? What, what's your take on that? I guessed wrong on Saturday. <laughs> well, I'm... I, I think it's a blend of athleticism and being a head smart baseball player and knowing situations and how someone's going to pitch to you. Um, but I, I know guys who are successful that are purely guess hitters and they don't want to know what's coming. If they, they'd rather not have any, uh, I mean, granted if, if a pitcher's tipping his pitches, then sure, you're going to be able to pick something up, but some guys would rather not know and just react. 
Yeah. And some guys are really trying to figure out, all right, I'm down the count. I'm probably going to see off speed and they're going to sit back more than they're going to otherwise. Right. So it's just up to how good of a, you know, hitter you are. basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I definitely hear that. Um, and even if you fail, you know, two times out of three, you're still a decent hitter. right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That funny Two love. times out of three, you're still doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Or, or, they, or they say three times out of ten, right? Three times out of ten, three hundred. So yeah, you're in the Hall of Fame, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the last thing I wanted to touch on is you had a campaign save opening day. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you bet. It kind of buried the lead there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're doing a save opening day campaign, and it's to raise. Um, uh, it's to raise funds, a community fundraiser, to, to have the Denver Browns play in a stadium this season. And the only reason being is that we're afraid that there may not be baseball in the stadium that we would normally have it in, at Coors Field. So in the event that, God forbid, there's no baseball season this year, which um, as of right now, we don't have an opening day, um, we're trying for there to be at least some form of an opening day in Denver. And unfortunately, the the stadium that, that we really, the only option, it's about $3,500 per double header. So there's a need for for us to raise this capital so we can play at a, at a, a semi, uh, you know, as a stadium that's going to be able to house what we're trying to put on. So... It's um, it's a pure endeavor. We're just trying to do something for the community, but uh, I feel like it's been a little bit of an uphill battle. I really appreciate you guys helping raise awareness around it, because uh, you know a lot of folks aren't even aware that there's not going to be an opening day right now. Yeah. I think uh, people are so football oriented that they mm. haven't really turned their attention to baseball yet, and when they do, it's going to be too late. So. Um, this is partly why we've, we've taken this on. Um, and we're running out of time for one, our, our commissioner needs to make the schedule, which means he needs to be able to finalize our, our location of every game right now. We've probably only got about opening day paid for. We're going to try to look to have another game paid for. That'll be an exhibition game, probably against the Boulder collisions, but all the money being raised will only go towards, uh, providing baseball for the community. It won't, it's not going to go towards, uh, you know, paying for league fees or paying for umpire fees or things that we normally are self-sufficient in paying for. This is solely going for the venue. So and we have live music at all of our games. Our games are free. Uh, our motto is free family fun. So we're all, you know, trying to get as many kids out there and, and making it inexpensive and uh, accessible. So... I saw something on the website that said monthly stand-up comedy uh, on the field. What, tell me what that is. <laughs> you know, we, it's something we tried last year, and, and I hope to bring it back this year, but we uh, had a, a monthly stand-up comedy game where between innings we'll have a local stand-up comedian. We had uh, Brad Galley this year, or last year, um, perform between innings, and he would just make wisecracks, uh, whether it be – a you know, making fun of players on the field or people <laughs> in the stands uh, or people commenting on our live stream or, or the musicians because we don't like, happen to have a, an organist play also. Uh, we try to have a live organist at all of our games. Oh, that's um, awesome. So it's, you know, we kind of have a little bit of a scene going on and uh, the people that show up tend to really enjoy the games. So it's a high level of baseball. And we try to bring a sort of high level of uh, entertainment between innings too, and uh, but it, we're we're semi pro in that too. Nobody's perfect, and we just try to have fun. So it's funny how the comedians can can uh, bring out the imperfections in everybody, right? Like, <laughs> totally, they'll, they'll yeah. find something. I mean, that's their job. <laughs> that's their job, exactly. right? Especially when you get a baseball oriented comedian. Oh, you know, sure. kind of, oh, you know what I mean? Can you believe that yeah. guy at third base? What's, what's yeah. he doing over there? Especially when, like we just been talking about it the whole time, uh, you fail. You're you're failing at it. So and he's thinking, oh, this is going to be easy. <laughs> Hey, well, you know, as I mentioned, our thing is about breaking the mold, you know, breaking the mold of amateur and semi-pro baseball. So if it sounds like a good idea, 
we're gonna we're gonna try it you know and and good is the enemy of great you know we're trying to be great in what we're doing so yeah I well think... we're only a, we're only an amateur semi-pro baseball team but we're trying to be the best in that that we we can be yeah i could definitely i could definitely respect that i mean that's that's kind of what um my goal or our goal was for the for for the show right i mean was to bring awareness to houston baseball um and and what we found out was as we were doing the show was like my, my whole my whole our whole take was hey i don't want to talk about mlb we're strictly we're strictly talking about amateur baseball in houston and it, i think it was successful and a lot of people enjoyed it because we were making stars of just amateur people right like hey look this guy 13 strikeouts you know 14 15 18 strikeouts this 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 game or this guy hit three or four home runs hey this guy had so many stolen bases or look at this team's undefeated right now and it was there were so many leagues that we were touching on that people were like hey i didn't know there was that league i i, I was only knew about this league and you know houston is huge but uh, you would never think that people would know about other leagues, but it, it it would happen because they were just concentrating on certain things. So it, it was def yeah. be definitely fun bringing awareness the, to the game. The only reason I have a platform to talk about the game that I do is because of all the talented baseball players that have played for me, right? Uh, if it weren't for all the talented baseball players that have played for the Browns, I wouldn't have no, – you guys wouldn't be talking to me today. You know, they're, they're, so I, I have nothing but – uh, gratitude for all the guys that have that have been able to feature over the years because I've been so lucky to have so many great baseball players and all I've done is turn on the camera all yeah. I've done is just you know sort of like been able to feature them they're the show yep. it's not me yeah. I'm kind of surprised that anybody's tuned in to, to hear me talk in fact it's, <laughs> you know, it's really about the team yeah so, well that echoes with, with us I mean yeah. who they're not here to watch us just to you know, talk about whatever it's when you're good, you get recognized and you should yeah. get recognized. And, yeah. and, you know, we, we can definitely get behind that. Yeah. And that's, that's why we're yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, for us, you know, we, we try to, you know, one of the things that we do is if a team wins a championship, we bring them on the show, you know, live here and we talk about the game and we talk about what happened and, and they get their, you know, if you want to call it 15 minutes of fame within Houston uh, on here. And so, you know, it's, it's like you said, the show's about them and, and uh, we feature them and, and um, we've gotten support uh, from different players about what we do. And, and it's definitely, uh, like you said, add value, you know, you add value, you're spotlighting these, these, these guys that are talented uh, because, you know, uh, one of the things that I remember, you know, a few years ago, I, I remember just, you know, watching games and like, you know, watching these highlights in ESPN. I'm like, I've done that play or I've seen people in my league do that play. Like, it's not, I, I know commentators are paid <laughs> to make it seem more than it really is because that's what you're supposed to do, right? You know, hype up the sure, game. They're, they're selling the game. They're selling the game, right? And so you're looking, I'm like, wait a minute, it's not, it's not that hard. I've done that play. It's not that hard. And so, uh, but it's, but it's, but it's, it's, and that's sort of what kind of inspired this whole thing was like, hey, I want to be able to highlight other people that way that, hey, you know, yeah, MLB guys, you know, do the thing, but also semi pro and amateur players do the same thing, you know, that they, they just didn't get a chance to go all the way up. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that, that's one reason that uh, I think people show up to our games because they realize that, that it's not just the millionaire ball players that are making all these spectacular plays. There's a lot of talented baseball players walking the streets, you know. So yeah, it's it pretty cool. It is for sure. You know, I, I wanted to touch back on your, uh, you know, raising the money for opening day. You know, um, I've been uh, I've been fortunate and uh, to to play at Minute Maid Park uh, a few years ago, and uh, I think back then, and this is before they were winning. Because remember, that's what Cody pointed out to me. <laughs> this is before they were a championship uh, team, um, but they I think they were charging fifteen grand a game uh, to play mm -hmm. at Minute Maid Park, and um, that's I'll, actually kind of low. That's kind of cheap. Yeah, it, again, this is before they were winning. Well, yeah, that's because I think that's when they were had that 100-game losing season. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, so it, anything it's... Anything to bring money in the door. Exactly, you know, anything to bring the money. And I know we had a hard time raising that money, uh, but we were able to get one good game there, and it, and it was kind of neat for, 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 you know, amateur ball players to play at, 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 at Minute Maid Park. I know I enjoyed it. Um, the other thing, too, we were doing in one of our leagues was uh, playing at um, the Skeeters' uh, ballpark, which oh. now... 
Sugarland, yeah. Sugarland, yeah, which Const- now Constellation Field. Constellation, yeah. Constellation Field, and now it's absorbed by Space the Astro. Space Cowboys. Exactly. Space Cowboys? Yeah. Space Cowboys, yeah. yeah. And before right. they became that, we were able to play there. You know, I think, wow. I th- yeah, exactly. And uh, I think, we had our all-star games there, yeah. so it was really nice. Oh, it was great, man. Yeah. I mean, we'd have, uh, I think, two games uh, a day there, or, or two games, uh, two all-star games there, and uh, it was great. I mean, they did announce it, and uh, uh, it was it was, it was was part of our fee. It was part of our fee. So uh, but so I definitely appreciate what you guys are trying to do in, in, in Denver, trying to get, you know, on, on a good ball field and, and have a great game to, to keep baseball going. Well, thanks. Thank you both. Uh, it's, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, yeah, I don't know how well it's going to end up being supported. It's kind of, you know, if you build it, they will come type, type yeah. thing. And, and maybe they won't come. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it works in but, the movies, but we'll see about real life, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, the last thing I want to leave you with here is, uh, I think Carlos was supposed to jump on, but, uh, you know, we're part of a traveling uh, baseball team. You know, we go play tournaments in uh, Arizona, Florida, South Carolina, and we're going to Vegas here this weekend to go play uh, in the 35 and up division, um, which should be, you know, they won last year. The Gamblers won last year. Uh, but I know when I, when I uh, Carlos, which kind of manages that team, him and Pedro, I think Pedro managed it a little bit more, but uh, I know when I talked to him today, I'm like, hey, he's like, who are you going to have on the show today? And I, and I told him, I was like, yeah, you know, Matt Replinger. And he was like, um, what did he say? He goes, oh, yeah, I remember him from the, sure. from the classic. Yeah, he remembered from the classic. And he goes, hey, man, tell me if we, if we can go out there and play some ball with them. I said, hey, man, I, I mean, hopefully it's the summertime, man, because I ain't trying to go out there in the winter. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> if they wanted to come to Denver to, to play a couple of games, we might be able to work something out. Yeah. As long as we know long in advance, because we play on Sundays, so a lot of my guys really are only they're they're available on Sundays only. Yeah. So it's uh, it's kind of a unique situation, but we do head down to F- to Phoenix every year for the NABA championship. Oh, nice! And I I need I need all the talent I can get to go win that thing. We've. We've played second before. We've finished in the top four or five different times. We've never won it. And this, this is our year. We're, we're kind of geared up to, to do all we can this season. And if there's ball players that want to you know, help our pitching staff or you know, can drop bombs, we're, we're definitely looking for, to add a couple guys that can rake. And um, So, yeah, if guys are wanting to head out to Phoenix to play in October, I, I'm all ears. Love to talk to them. Nice. Nice. We'll, we'll... You know, one of our one of our aces. I, one of our, my ace for the Denver Browns name's Houston Hibbard. Name <laughs> names Houston. He's not from Houston. He's from San Francisco. But my my ace on my Mile High Green Gump, Elephants right? team. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, my ace on my Green Elephants team, Mile High Green Elephants. His name's Jack Finnegan, and he's from Houston. In fact, his brother is Ross Finnegan, uh, the Washington Nationals. Okay. And, uh, Guy throws gas. Uh, he threw an immaculate inning last year for the oh, Nationals. Wow. Um, but his brother, Jack, is a really talented guy, and uh, he's from Houston, and uh, he's he's one of our best pitchers. So nice, nice, nice. I mean, I yeah. I, I definitely, you know, we'll if if you know when you get around that time or whatever, you know, you just let me know, and we'll we'll throw something on our end, and, and you know, let the the best of the best reach out to you, you know, because I mean, I, I've I've gone to Arizona too. We've gone, me and Cody, gone to Arizona for, for the uh, MSBL. MSBL, yeah. but I've also done the NABA and I've also done the Adult Houston Association one too. So we played a, quite a bit of tournament tournament ball tournament ball. <laughs> so NABA, we, we, they do theirs in Phoenix we, also. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, they do. And, and Florida yeah, they, too. Yeah. They have one in Florida in November, I think, as well, or maybe later in October. I'm not sure, but. uh we brought our, our organist down there last year, so we actually had some of our stadium games with a live organist playing between innings and between wow. the bats, and it was it was great. It was like real nostalgic kind of. That's cool. Uh, old, that makes it official. Baseball, yeah. right? That's an official right, right the there. The organist, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> was it was it that organist that got in trouble for playing the three blind mice, uh, or was yeah. it like a DJ? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I think it was an organist. <laughs> Angel Hernandez, right? No, well, I don't know if it was Angel Hernandez, oh, okay. but but I don't know if you remember that rep. But there was a it was a it's an old video, but you know apparently the the organist the, get thrown out of the game. <laughs> I think so. I think yeah. he did. I think yeah. well he motioned you know the umpire motioned for it, but they were playing the three blind <laughs> the three blind mice <laughs> to talk about yeah his uh, unbelievably 
bad strike calling at the plate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Angel like, Hernandez uh, is so <laughs> unliked. Gosh, I I don't mind Angel Hernandez, although I know he's done some unscrupulous things, but uh, and I know he's not a very good umpire. But like I, he's so hated that I just want to like as a person, I want to like be like the the one guy that's like he, he you know he's got a mom, he's got a dad. Like can everybody <laughs> not hate Angel Hernandez? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you know he 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 had a what he have like a I think last season where he like he grabbed a baseball or bought somebody something I don't remember what it was but he he did something that made him look human other than just being an umpire right because everybody you know the umpires are the bad guys right he did something and like it actually brought some good light to him and everybody oh, yeah. was like oh man Angel Hernandez you, is great. you know he did something that I I might be the only person that noticed it and he got a lot of bad uh, publicity not a lot of bad publicity but it it came off bad. Because I, he he actually did a yoga pose while between innings, he he instead of standing there like you should be doing, he went into crow pose, which is like you're down on your hands, and and he was doing an arm balance between innings, and it got photographed, and he got a whole lot of shit for it, and you know as a yogi I'm like that's kind of cool, yeah. But, it's actually from the baseball tradition standpoint, like that's a lot of people did not like that. So, you know, I don't know where I stand on that. actually. But, um, <laughs> you, you could go either way. It sounds like, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> maybe that's why I, I want to like angel. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I guess we'll wrap it up. You got, you got anything else you want to, you want to put out there, Brett? I, I just want to thank you both for having me on. It's been really fun. I think it's been a good conversation. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. Uh, I'm. I'm glad you came on. I'm glad we could talk. I do want to. Let me go back. Since you bring up yoga, I, I know this is important to you. I, I've never done yoga, and I imagine a lot of guys that listen haven't. What's maybe some basic things that you know someone could do before a game that that you think would would benefit uh, them, and and what kind of benefit you think they would would get out of it? You know, from from a mental standpoint do, doing just a three minute quiet sit just sitting quietly for three minutes and being able to not have your phone near you not have anybody distract you to actually just be able to to quiet your mind before a game starts i think that's really beneficial you don't really realize how scattered your mind is going into everything you have to do as a ball player you gotta get your spikes on you gotta get loose you gotta make sure you got the right belts you gotta uh see where you're batting in the lineup you, you gotta you know do all sorts of things well how often do you just quiet your mind and, and let everything kind of take care of itself and that that's that goes for life you know creating a space to just be able to sit quietly for three minutes it's so it's so helpful beyond that you know i think i'm a big proponent of bands jager bands I mean, in terms of staying healthy, our arms are the biggest thing that's going to end up putting us on the injury reserve. You know, using those those surgical tubing, so good for your arm. And that's yeah. not necessarily yoga, yeah. but yeah. that's that's not lifting either. It's a different type of training that we have to do as baseball players. So. Yeah. You know, it's funny. No matter wh what time I get to the field, I, I feel like there's never enough time to do the things I need to do. <laughs> so, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from, you know, taking a few minutes and just trying to get your mind right, you know, get ready for the game. You know, I, I think um, I think, he, you know, you touched on a good point because, uh, uh, you know, I got an Apple watch and Apple would remind me, hey, well, I started a couple of years ago. They started saying, hey, take some deep breaths. Like it, it knew like my heart was I was getting like anxious and he'd be like hey take 15 minutes or whatever and then they would take for a minute you would just look at your watch and it would just you would just breathe have controlled breathing and now they have another one kind of what you're talking about rip about clearing your mind like there's another thing that'll pop up on me like hey like it like it notices again notices my vitals and it kind of goes hey you need to do this and 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 i think i'm gonna I'm start listening to my watch i really haven't i really haven't done it but it it, it makes sense if, if I had advice on yoga, um, my first yoga teacher said, try an hour a week. Try Just try an hour a week and do that for maybe a month and and see how you feel after that month. 
Yeah. I'm just doing one, one hour a week of, of doing asana, doing the movements of yoga, and, and find a yoga studio that's convenient for you. And it doesn't matter if it's all women in the class. Yoga is universal. Um, if you don't like the class, go find a, another place. Um, but, you know, you can't really practice yoga unless you go and try to practice yoga. So um, that that's what I, my recommendation on that. So. I definitely second that. You know, it's it's funny you touched on that about women, because when I took that first class in in um in uh, when I was at Lifetime Fitness, I was intimidated because it was all women in there, right? So, and I was intimidated because I was like, I didn't want to look like the perv, right? Like, oh yeah, of course you're in here for yoga, yeah, right, dude, whatever. Because you're probably in the back. So, so here's the thing. I was in the no. Here's the thing. Here's the funny thing. I was in the back because I was intimidated because I didn't know none of the poses, right? Like, yeah. like these people, you know. Luckily, I knew the instructor, right? Because uh, at the time when I was married, my wife worked there, so she's like, "Hey, I know the instructor. Just go." Just and she, she kept bugging me, like, "Come in here, come in here." And she finally brought me in there. You know, I went in there, and it was like the best thing ever. I mean, I, I really, it, it really, like he said, settled your mind. It wasn't just stretching. It really, like, it was so quiet in there, and it was just, it really. Meditative almost. Huh? It, it, yeah. it, it, you know when they, they, if they said this, they said it's better than a massage. It did. I was so relaxed. It was just, it cleared my mind. And, uh, but I just, I, I, once I got over the whole being the weirdo, like the only guy in there kind of thing, and, and also, <laughs> and also, uh, not being intimidated by the poses because it was a beginner's, you know, uh, yoga class. So she's like, hey, come in. It's, it, 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 we're not advanced. You're not going to do some weird crane move or anything like that. It's, it's, it, it, and I wish I would have stuck with it more, you know. Well, it's still available to you, Armando. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. You're 100% right. <laughs> he plays too much baseball. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're 100% right. Um, but okay. Um, Anything else, Cody? No, nah, nah, we appreciate you being here. We had fun. Uh, even though it was really cold, it was a fun weekend. And glad we got to meet you guys and, and have a good time and watching baseball. And hopefully we can uh, reconnect here in the future. Yeah, yeah, next year. S sounds good. Yeah, let's stay in touch, both of you. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Armando. All right. All right you yeah, bet. You have, have a good night. night. Okay. You too. Blessings. All right. All right. Okay. That's it for us, everybody. We don't got that many guys on, but uh, the, foes, the, the the ones that hung on and the ones that are going to listen tomorrow, hopefully we'll enjoy. It was a great interview, man. Yeah, and uh, try some yoga. You never know. Get your mind right. Get your mind and good thing. Get your mind right, good things will happen, right? That's what they say. You know, Maybe I, we can I, hit bombs. We get our mind right. Maybe we can start hitting bombs. You know, this is going to sound stupid, but... Uh, when I started imagining hitting home runs, yeah, it came true. Like, like it, it kind of came to the, his sounds so stupid. I, I don't even believe I'm saying this shit, but it was like, if I can't imagine hitting a home run, how can I hit How a home can run? it happen? How can it happen? Because exactly. imagine if you could do it. Once I started imagining, like, oh, I'm gonna hit the ball, it's gonna fly, and I could see it, I could, I could, you know, I could, I could picture it. Start happening. Yeah. Start happening. No, I, I believe it. You you have, yeah, you, you have to imagine it. You have to think, oh, hey, I, I can do this. Let me try and do it. And, and then it just, it, that's when it comes. Manifest itself. You know, it's funny because we're, we're, we're all grown men, right? Physically, we, sh most of us have enough strength to hit the ball over the fence, right? Yeah. You know, if it's in a perfect spot or whatever, but it's so hard to do that. Yeah. You know, I know the pitcher is trying to get us out or whatever, but since we're physically able to do it, well, we need to mentally be able to do it, yep. and, and I think that's what uh, that's what you did. Yeah, big part of it, big yeah. part of it. So, all right, everybody, we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Hopefully, we get to play some baseball. Everybody, stay healthy. Uh, everybody, you know, turn your fans on and blow away the clouds away from Houston. <laughs> yeah, it's March first. We're getting closer to spring, so we had a big opening season, uh, yeah. opening. Uh, weekend and it just kind of went to crap after that so. and uh we won't have a show next week cody's gonna be snowboarding i'm gonna be in uh gonna vegas be vegas, vegas yeah. uh, gam ga gambling with the gamblers i'll be in denver maybe i'll swing by and talk to yeah him. that'd be cool man yeah. that'd be cool to see maybe get a little tour uh but uh okay everybody have a good night all right good night guys